Hi, I'm Yvonne and welcome to the RV Cooking Show, a place where we can share our passion for RVing and our love for recreating regional food specialties from all across the country right here in my RV kitchen. Today is our annual Thanksgiving show and one thing that we're so thankful for here at the RV Cooking Show is you, our RV Cooking Show viewers. Thank you for taking the time to spend with us here today and at every episode. We're so glad, so glad for your friendship. Today, I'm going to make some stuffing. In fact, I'm going to make Aunt Lucy's stuffing, a taste sensation from my childhood. I'm also going to talk a little bit about our public lands and some of my favorite lesser known national parks and national monuments. But before we talk about that, let's get cooking our stuffing. It's easy as can be and it's delicious. What we're going to do first is we're going to saute up some celery and some onion in about one stick of butter. Now my Aunt Lucy's recipe calls for a stick of oleo. You can use butter or you can use one of those smart balance sticks that works really well. I've got about four or five ribs of celery cut up. You can see the pieces aren't, oops, aren't terribly too large, just like that. And I've got one medium onion chopped. So let's saute that up right here in our butter. In just a few minutes, the celery and the onion are gonna get nice and soft and fragrant. We'll saute this up for about five minutes or so. This is a really simple stuffing, but you can adjust it to your taste buds. For instance, if you love sage, put a couple leaves of sage in here while you're sauteing up the onions and the celery. Do you like sausage? Put some sausage in here at this step as well. If you like nuts, that can go in, fruit, apricots, cranberry, whatever you like. But for me, Aunt Lucy's simple Thanksgiving stuffing is the way to go. So I think our celery and our onions are nice and soft. They're done and we're ready to proceed with our stuffing. Over here, I've got one loaf of white bread and this is torn up in pretty large chunks. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to add our celery and our onion and our butter mixture right to the bread. It's hot though, be careful. And we're going to stir this up. Just mix it up a little bit. The next stuffing ingredient that we're going to add are our eggs. Here we've got five eggs. These are just roughly beaten. We're going to pour this right on top of our mixture. Like so. All soak in and be delicious. Mm -hmm. Before we mix it around, we're going to add a little bit of salt couple turns, a little bit of pepper, and a little bit of paprika for color and flavor. Well, our stuffing is mixed together well. It is the perfect consistency and it's ready to go. But you might notice I have a little glass of milk here on my counter. Depending on the size of the eggs and the bread, if your stuffing mix is not quite moist enough, you would just add a touch or two of milk to make it the right consistency. Now, this is where my Aunt Lucy's recipe ends. Aunt Lucy typically takes the stuffing, puts it inside the bird, and cooks the Thanksgiving turkey stuffing and all. But for us in our RV kitchen, if you've seen last year's Thanksgiving show, you know that we cook a turkey breast in our crock pot. So what we're going to do is we're going to cook our stuffing, Aunt Lucy's stuffing, in a 9x9 nine nine Pyrex dish. Easy enough. So we've got our dish. We've sprayed it with some canola oil spray just to make it nice and moist and slick. And we're going to put our stuffing right in the Pyrex baking dish, just like this. We're going to cover our stuffing with a little piece of aluminum foil, and we're going to pop it into our toaster oven. Our toaster oven set at about 350 degrees, 
and we're gonna cook this for about 30 minutes or so until the top is nice and done. We know the inside will be delicious and moist. Gobble, gobble. Our public lands, and specifically our national parks and our national monuments, are absolute gems. And I don't know about you, but oftentimes when I go to a national park and soak in the nature or the history and the peace of it all, I come away a better person. I feel like I leave a little bit of my soul and yet I'm restored when I leave the park. Now perhaps you and your family have visited some of the better known national parks and national monuments. I'm thinking Yellowstone, the Grand Canyon, maybe even the Everglades. But today I'm going to tell you about three of my favorite lesser known national parks and monuments. And by the way, lesser known just means less people and more room for you to roam. So I want to start out telling you about Congaree. National Park. And this is just outside of Columbia, South Carolina. It is one of the largest hardwood bottomland forest stands left in the United States. Now you know how in most national parks you can take a guided ranger hike? Well at Congaree you can take a guided ranger canoe trip. The way that they work it is they have the canoe trips only on Saturdays and Sundays and they take reservations for them every quarter. So you need to visit their website to get the times, get the dates. I'll put that on my website, rvcookingshow.com so you can find it easily. And if you're in the area, sign up. It is a great experience. A little further west is Hot Springs, Arkansas. And though many people walk up and down Bathhouse Row and even tour the beautifully restored Fordyce Bathhouse, many people miss the bathing experience at the Buckstaff Bathhouse. Make sure you take that in. It takes a couple of hours and it is the best that we've had over the United States. Buckstaff Bathhouse on Bathhouse Row in Hot Springs, Arkansas, not to be missed. The last one I want to tell you about is Sunset Crater Volcano and Wupatki National Monument. This is just outside of Flagstaff, Arizona, and it's really, really interesting. The parks butt up against one another, and what you do from Flagstaff is you drive through Sunset Crater Volcano first. Stop, get out, walk a couple of the loops, and take in the really interesting geology, and then head off to Wapatki. There you'll find Pueblo ruins and several little villages of ruins with the architecture different in every one of them. Amazing, quiet, historic, one of my favorites in the whole country. Sunset Crater Volcano and Wupatki National Monument are not to be missed. I think Aunt Lucy's Thanksgiving stuffing is just about done. It smells amazing and I'm getting hungry. The top is a beautiful, beautiful golden brown, and I can tell by just looking at it that the inside is nice and moist. It's going to be delicious. Make sure that you make plenty of this stuffing for Thanksgiving Day. All the trimmings, you can see us make our crock pot turkey breast, by the way, or mom's famous cranberry sauce on our website. I'll link to both of those episodes on rvcookingshow.com. You also want to make sure you make enough stuffing for leftovers. Perhaps the day after Thanksgiving you'll make yourself a delicious leftover turkey sandwich with some of Aunt Lucy's stuffing. You'll pile on some of Mom's famous cranberry sauce, pack it up, and head out to one of your favorite public lands and enjoy your leftover turkey sandwich al fresco. Thank you so much for joining us today and at every episode. We love seeing you here and having you over. You can find this recipe for Aunt Lucy's stuffing on my website at rvcookingshow.com along with lots of other Thanksgiving tips and also information about those fabulous national parks. We'll see you again next time right here and we can't wait on the RV Cooking Show. Goodbye. Hmm.